Hello, tea friends. This is Barb Gully of Barb's Tea Service, and we are back in the studio, courtesy of TV, for our podcast. I'm here with co-host, mm-hmm. studio engineer, Chuck Arm Candy. Chuck, Chuck. <laughs> Chris Gully. Chuck, Chuck, Chuck. Hello, Chris. Hi. I'm I'm Chuck today. <laughs> Or need to check in. Okay. 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 So today is our 14th podcast. Yes. Or I might say 14. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because today we, again, have a lot of ground to cover, but our topics are going to be Mm -hmm. a lot of French related things. Okay. Louis the 14th and Versailles. Mm -hmm. We have the French Revolution and Bastille Day Mm -hmm. coming up. Right. July 14th. Amazing. Wow. Uh Uh-huh. We're going to talk about Marie Antoinette, Paris, Uh and French tea. Uh Uh-huh. C'est beaucoup un peu de temps. Wow. That means that's a lot to cover in a short time. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I think we can do it. All right. And if we have time, I think it'd be fun to share a northern Michigan tea business. Yes. That we met up with last week. Yes. Okay. So... May d'abord le thé. Ooh, I think that means something. <laughs> As we Americans would say, but first tea. All right, here we go. So today I selected De Mon Frere, mm-hmm. and we had this a couple of podcasts ago. Right. Uh, we had. I mentioned that this was given to us by our favorite New York couple, Mm -hmm. and Jenna, when they were in Paris. They brought this back. Right. It was a a sampler. Mm -hmm. And we had a green tea last, well, podcast 12. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned that this company had ties to, all the way back to King Louis XIV. Mm -hmm. And you said, let's save that story for our 14th podcast. How prescient of me. (laughs) You are trade genius. Wow. Yes. All right. So... Today, we're, we're brewing up another one of the De Mon Frere mm-hmm. teas, and mm-hmm. this one is called Jardin Bleu. Okay, that's uh, Blue Garden? Yes. Okay. Very good. Wow. And did you take a little sample? I Let's will. try yep. a little bit. Yep. Okay, this, I like it. It's a, it's a black tea, right? It is a black tea. You're right. correct. Um, and, uh, for my, I was, uh, looking at my, my, uh, tasting wheel. Um, it, I am picking up for my, for myself, like, uh, kind of a, uh, unripe peach. Oh. And, uh, and maybe a little, um, maybe a little rose scent or something like that. Okay. So I think you're very close. Okay. I know it's in it, so okay. All right. <laughs> I can tell you. You have a better palate, I believe, but it has rhubarb. Oh, okay. Wild strawberry. Ah, okay. Just plain old strawberry. Okay. And flower petals. Okay. So that All right. You were okay. getting florals, okay. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. Wow. Very good. Huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, I, I think uh, I think it was very good. All okay. Right. So. As we mentioned with the la- the podcast twelve, that mm-hmm. we were going to talk a little bit about the history of De Mon Frere okay. tea, uh-huh. and with its connections to Louis the Fourteenth, going mm-hmm. back that far. Uh-huh. So I just, I guess, kind of coincidentally, it was also there was an article with a Tea Time magazine, right? In Tea Time magazine, I was going to say there's a Tea Time magazine connection, but it was in Tea Time. Last year, they did an article mm-hmm. on this company. Mm-hmm. So I drew some of the information from that article as well as their website. Mm-hmm. But this goes back to, again, King Louis the Fourteenth, Right. And as we found in earlier podcasts, mm-hmm. tea came to Europe in the 17th century. Yep. And the Dutch were the first. Mm-hmm. Of course, England. Right. No surprise. But French, sometimes we don't think about that yeah. tea yep. connection. Yep. But... During this time, tea was getting to be quite popular in France. Europe was mad about tea. They really were. <laughs> <laughs> and so because of this, mm-hmm. the Sir de Mom mm-hmm. was given a, an exclusive right to sell tea right. 
by King Louis the Fourteenth. Okay, must have been some great guy. Yeah, and so for a while he had uh, exclusivity of selling this tea, and it right. also included cocoa and coffee and mm-hmm. spices. Mm-hmm. And for more than three centuries, this company was selling pretty much to hotels and right. restaurants. I guess what we'd call kind of more wholesale. Exactly. Right. right. And they did create a lot of demand with mm-hmm. consumers, mm-hmm. and they would be inquiring, "Where can I get this great tea?" Right. And they would still they would sell to consumers, but when the big changes happened, it mm-hmm. was in the twentieth century. Uh-huh. Surprisingly, yeah. The the company brought on a gentleman, Jean Jou, Jumeau Lafont. Very good. Yes. <laughs> and with his arrival, mm-hmm. he changed, made some noticeable changes. Mm-hmm. He had the company focus strictly on tea. Uh-huh. And then in 2008, yeah. he opened up their first, well, they opened up their right. first tea room in Paris. Uh-huh. Now, that's when we went to Paris. It is. 2008. Yes. And we were celebrating an anniversary of sorts. Number 25. That's correct. And I don't know. I don't recall seeing this tea room. Yeah. But yeah. We, we were going all over. We were taking the sights in. We were taking in the sights. So it was a really nice place to spend. To, mm-hmm. to share a, right. this wonderful anniversary. And we went not only to Paris, that's where we were kind of home-based, right, right. but we did some other trips. We went up to Giverny mm-hmm. and the home of... Uh, Monet. Exactly. Uh-huh. And his water lilies, yes. which I think influenced... We stole that idea. Yes. Just, just say it. At Pemberley Pines. So our pond has water lilies yes. in it. It's, it's lovely, yeah. It's reminiscent yeah. of Giverny. And we also went to the Ver- to Versailles mm-hmm. and that was the royal palace of King Louis the 14th, uh-huh. 15th and 16th. Yes. And do you recall how uh, our tour guide had told us you could remember the Louis oh, and, yes. and the history of Versailles? So it was kind of like the life cycle. So Louis the 14th built it. Uh Louis the 15th enjoyed it and uh the 16th kind of lost it. That that's it. Yep. That's true. <laughs> so as we had mentioned before, Versailles had started like Chambron, mm-hmm. like Pemberley Pines, uh-huh. as a, a humble hunting lodge. Uh, there probably was not a pop-up camper involved in those first two <laughs> examples, but yes. I think you're right. But the this was Versailles originally started out with King Louis the Thirteenth. Right. It was his hunting lodge, right. and so King Louis the Fourteenth turned it into a royal palace. Right. And, and just as a as a kind of an aside, it, uh, so there's. Uh, so that area is totally built up and it's kind of hard to believe that that was probably back in the day it was out in the middle of nowhere and exactly. you would, you know, some forest and, and actually there would be wild animals out there to hunt. Right. Can't do that now. No, no. It's, it is right in the, the yeah. thick of civilization right, right, there. Right, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, good point. Yeah. So just to give some context. I'm going to throw out a few dates. Okay. Okay. So King Louis the Fourteenth was uh-huh. born in 1638. Uh huh. Louis the Fifteenth, 1710. Okay. And Louis the Sixteenth was born in 1754. That's quite a span. It is quite a span. So you'll notice that with those dates, it's not just directly from right. father to son. Right. So there were a few generation skips. Right. There was some sideways. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, tracking, and that's due to premature deaths, right. with illnesses, diseases, yep. and everything. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't right. just total linear. Right. But But they were all of the same house, right? It was the uh their dynasty name was Bourbon. That's right. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. And those are things that you also enjoy. That's little, right. A little bit of Bourbon <laughs> in right. the evening. Okay. Right. So it was Again, Louis the Fourteenth, who made it the royal palace, he right. wanted to get his nobles out of Paris, and and so he could keep an eye on them. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a smart move. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the last Louis who lived in Versailles, right? And his wife, mm-hmm. Marie Antoinette, mm-hmm. and we've talked about her 
before. She's right. a favorite at, with Barb's Tea Service. Right. And she, we when we were talking about Vienna, uh-huh. we mentioned her mother. Right. And a Mar- uh, Marie Antoinette was born in Vienna. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to show a picture of Marie Antoinette to those for those who are watching. Okay. There you go. A Can fi- you see that? A fine lady. It, she was very pretty. She was noted to be quite a beauty. Uh-huh. And that picture came from France. That was from our daughter, Rachel. Uh-huh. And she was there in 2011, part of her study abroad. Right. She thought her of her mother. She uh, said, Mom needs a picture of Marie Antoinette from Paris. As one does. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so Marie Antoinette is famous for a quote. Uh-huh. Do you know what that quote is? Uh, I think I think it was, uh, who let the dogs out? <laughs> am, I, am I wrong? Is uh, that wrong? Yes. Oh. Um, <laughs> Darn. That's not even close. Okay. But um, well, it wasn't in French, so there. <laughs> that's right. Who let the chiens out? <laughs> okay, I I think you're pulling my leg. Okay, you know what it is. Yes, it is let them eat cake. Yes, and that is something again that was closely re- yep. related to Marie Antoinette. Right, and many historians There's- are. There's some dispute. There is some dispute. One of our favorite historians is among the many that yep. think that this is not true. Right. Lucy Wolseley. Mm-hmm. And there's, they can find really nothing solid yep. that puts Marie Antoinette with this quote. Yeah, nothing con- contemporaneous. E- right. Even though uh-huh. it's been in history books, it's been in some of the U.S. Right. history books. Yeah. Not really true. It's kind of George Washington and the cherry tree thing. Right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. It, so the, the true quote was, qu'il mange de la brioche. Brioche. I know that word. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yum. <laughs> which means, let them eat brioche. Uh-huh. Which is probably not as catchy as cake, uh-huh. gateau, yeah. or cronuts. Yeah. Let them eat cronuts. <laughs> but... Now this is just getting weird. <laughs> but... It is attributed to a great princess, uh-huh. and it's believed to be Queen Maria Therese, uh-huh. who is the wife of King Louis the Fourteenth. Okay, a little little miss in the time lapse. Oh yeah, okay, big time, right. hundred years uh, okay. at least, and it boils down to really some unfortunate propaganda. Yep. It's kind of sad. Yes, but anyway, I one of the things I I like to talk about is in my my. One treasure in my possession is a teacup mm-hmm. that is said to have been, it's a reproduction right. of one that is said to have been at Versailles, Versailles right. and designed with the help of Marie Antoinette. Uh-huh. So I purchased this back in 2007 mm-hmm. in New York mm-hmm. and it was at Bernardo's. It's a yeah. French porcelain company and mm-hmm. they have, you know, their headquarters is in France, right? But of course, New York yeah. has everything. They have everything, yes. and so they they sell high end china mm-hmm. and also historic china, where they get the licenses from some of these museums, mm-hmm. and this includes Versailles and right. this very lovely teacup. Mm-hmm. And back when I bought it in two thousand seven, I know it's more now, but it, it was over two hundred dollars for just the the. Just the teacup. Just the teacup. That's and that's when two hundred dollars was real money. <laughs> that's right. It wasn't just Tuesday yeah. at uh, in oh. the drive-through. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yes. So I bring this teacup though. It's gotten a lot of use. Mm-hmm. I bring the teacup when I have a tea talk that is connected to Marie Antoinette. Uh-huh. And surprisingly, yeah. there's a there's a fair amount of connections to Marie Antoinette, including Jane Austen. Uh huh. That's right. Yeah. So. If you want to see this teacup, you will have to come to one of our Barb's Tea Services there's, tea talks. There's your teaser. <laughs> That's very good. Okay. So, okay. Then we were talking about, I kind of got off right. on that, but uh, right. I, I digress a bit. But with the with King Louis the Sixteenth and Marie Antoinette, mm-hmm. we, we get to this revolution. Right. And we have Bastille Day, July 14th, 14th, another 14th. Another 14th. So we kind of really are yeah. holding true to this yep, yep. 14th podcast. So this, again, the the storming of the Bastille was a little bit of theater. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they really didn't release. Well, it doesn't. So, you know, you, I think there's a, in popular culture, there's a lot of these paintings and, you know, thousands of prisoners uh, being released. And I think it was like six. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which, you know, I mean, it's, it's not nothing, but it wasn't quite the coup that uh, uh, it might have been made out to be. Right. And and it, there were some that really should have, yeah. of, of this handful, yeah. <laughs> some that should not have been yeah, right, released. Right. Yeah. Didn't know what was going on. Right. Okay. So, I have a lot of great memories yes. from that mm-hmm. trip. Yeah. And I, it was my first time to Paris. Right. But it wasn't your first time. No, it was not. You were back there when you were 19. That's right. It was my, uh, that was the, uh, my days, you know, I was the uh, uh, college student on a bicycle with a backpack, you know, touring uh, England, Scotland, and and a bit of France. And uh, so we did stop in in Paris. And um, so this would be 1975. So uh, big changes. So in 75, no one spoke English, really. Right, right. Um, and, um, and so that was, that was different. Um, and then, uh, in, uh, our later trip, um, there was a McDonald's there right. on the Chandelier. Right. But it wasn't your normal <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> no, I, it, in fact, yes, it was right off the Chandelier. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, just, I want to just yeah. note that you were right. I mean, yeah. just on your comment about people not speaking English. Right. So when we were there, I mean, yeah. we had really yeah. no trouble no. navigating and and uh which was interesting yeah. development. Right. But yes, this McDonald's. So when we walked in, it was on the Champs-Élysées. Yes. I don't know who how how they were able to do that, yeah, yeah, but yeah. they they did. Yeah. And when we walked in, I thought I had Well, we were in the wrong place. Right. We were that can't be because it was beautiful. Yes. It was. It, it had these like marble floors and these white columns yeah. and beautiful right. counters with macarons they were uh, selling. Yes. <laughs> like right. macarons. Yeah. One of our one of our guilty pleasures when we travel is uh, we will look up and and uh, and uh, patronize the local McDonald's because that's what we do. That's yes, <laughs> yes. We we do. We're classy. I know. <laughs> Stay classy, gullies. Yes. <laughs> Right. So, uh, yeah, but this was was pretty remarkable. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so when we went to, <clears throat> excuse me, when we went to Paris, mm-hmm. we I, I loved our hotel. Mm-hmm. It, again, it was pretty close to the Champs Elysees right. and McDonald's. Uh, yes, but it was also the home of where I should say where a place where Marcel Proust had lived. Lived right, and they they did market that the right. the hotel mm-hmm. did say that, mm-hmm. but. And it was a typical European hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of small. Yeah, charming. When, char- oh, super charming. Yeah. And when you looked out the window, yeah. if you kind of uh, crane your neck, yeah, <laughs> stretched a little bit, you could see the Eiffel Tower. Amazing. And they didn't mention that. Yeah. And, and I thought, you That's, know. It's like every day, you know. Right. And I thought, you know, if this would have been an American hotel, yeah. how they would have yeah. marketed it yeah. as, you know, peekaboo views yes. of the Eiffel Tower yes. or some sort of, um, you know. Yeah. Catching a glimpse of the tower, <laughs> yeah. but but there was nothing. Yeah. So they they were pretty. Yeah. Um, they, they were blasé yes, about it. Yes. And Another they, French word <laughs> we're throwing into the yeah. mix here. Oh, very good. <laughs> uh-huh. Very good. Yeah. Okay, so a couple of places that I wanted to go when we were in in France, uh-huh. or we in Paris, was I wanted to go to Mariage Frere uh-huh. and Angelina's. All right. And Mariage Frere, we we uh, they also had ties back to Louis the 14th. Right. Mm-hmm. This Nicolas Mariage mm-hmm. was actually doing uh working for the their trading company mm-hmm. and uh the French East India Trading right. Company uh-huh. uh, because there's an English yep. East, all right. So um so he this um Nicolas Mariage he was kind of working for Louis the 14th mm-hmm. and making trade deals. Mm-hmm. And he was making deals with, it, uh, with the Shah of Persia. Right. So that was his job. Mm-hmm. And then his brother was also doing things. And you know, centuries later, they're still in the trades. Mm-hmm. And we get to the 1850s. Right. And apparently, the the exclusivity of tea had that we talked about right. for the Demont family mm-hmm. 
that must have expired because right. Mary Ashbury, they're selling tea mm-hmm. and they are the descendants of Nicholas. Right. They open up a tea business in Paris mm-hmm. and very successful. Right. But it wasn't until actually in the late 20th century when they opened tea rooms. Yes. And one of the, there's three of these tea rooms in Paris. Uh Uh-huh. One of them we went to. Mm-hmm. That's the original building that the right. the brothers had in 1854. Right. Yeah. And now it's a tea room, and they also have a tea museum yep. upstairs, yep. which we went to. Yeah. Well, as, you know, something we might want to uh, explore in uh, future podcasts is, you know, we've been to tea rooms in, you know, Great Britain, the U.S., of course, and in in France, and there there are differences in kind of how they present and what they serve, yes. and it might yes. be. You know, if you're interested in travel and that sort of thing, I think that would be kind of a fun topic to touch on. Oh, I love it. All right. Okay. Okay. Trade genius. I know. Again. Again. <laughs> I can't help it. So um, so when we were at Mary Ash Bear, I will say to this day, uh-huh. it is where I had the best cup of tea ever. That's a bold statement. <laughs> it is a bold statement, but I stand by it. What was and it? It was, I, it was the... <laughs> their it was their breakfast tea, uh-huh. but it was fabulous. Uh-huh. And they have a whole bunch of teas. I'm going to just show okay. you. This is one of my souvenirs okay. from the, the tea room. But it seemed as though all their servers were sommeliers of, yes. of sorts, and yeah. it was brewed expertly. It was just so. It was a very high end experience. It was. Yeah. It was. And so we we really it, that was quite an experience. We also went to Angelina's, uh-huh. and Angelina's is across from the Louvre. Remember yes, that? Yes. Uh-huh, mm-hmm. And that started, that was created in 1904, I mm-hmm. think it was, by a gentleman whose name was Antoine Rumpelmeyer. Uh-huh. And he named this tea room, well, it was a, it's a restaurant, yeah. and he named it after his daughter-in-law, uh-huh. Angelina. Oh, That's kind of sweet, isn't it? Is. it? yeah. So here is the, the tea tin mm-hmm. that I got when I was there. Uh-huh. It is the best Earl Grey. Mm-hmm. Oh, again, another bold statement. Another bold statement. Yes. Right. So we, when we visited there, we had uh, a little snack. We had right. the tea. Right. And it was a place back in the day uh-huh. for all the fashionable set. Uh-huh. Coco Chanel yes. liked to go there. Uh-huh. So did Marcel Proust. Amazing. Isn't wow. it? What a tie-in. <laughs> exactly like yeah. wow this guy got around he did <laughs> he was at our hotel yeah. and, okay what are you doing here <laughs> <laughs> right so the good news is yep. that angelina's is now there's a tea room right. in manhattan yes yes they opened up during quarantine yep <laughs> not the best but our our uh our New York family, yep. Matt and Jenna, uh-huh. they've been there. They've also purchased tea for me when they have been at Angelina's. Uh-huh. And there it is. All right. Earl, Earl Grey is so mm-hmm. good. Mm. And they, uh, there was a, an article I got from Untapped New York. The, the author, her husband, she's American, but her husband's right. French. Uh-huh. And she said that they have the best croissants in New York. And, are they, they're going to let them eat them? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I, that's right. Wow. I, I would say let them eat croissants. I'm sorry. <laughs> Grown nuts. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what we're talking yeah. about. Okay. All right. All right. But, um, but th- you know, that's pretty neat that they yeah. can replicate this right. amazing French yeah. taste. Right. So, so yes, I will say right. let me eat. Croissants. All right, very good. All right, so we can go there in in probably the next time we go to New York. Absolutely. Okay, so I don't know. Do we have time for? Oh, I, we have a little time. We yeah. can talk about yeah. our. We can leave France yeah. and New York. And yes. Come back to our wonderful home state of Michigan. Yes, let's do that. And we met up with a tea business in northern Michigan. Yes. Right near Pemberley mm-hmm. Pines. Right. Palace <laughs> yes. and our water well, lilies. Yes. And we met up with a woman. Her name is Trisha and Chef Trisha. Mm-hmm. And she was, she has a new business and it's called 
Tea Lake Tea and Treats. Right. And Tea Lake is very close to Pemberley right. Pines mm-hmm. Palace. Right. And it's spelled T E E. Yes. Like golf. Yeah. Golf tea, yep. But it's still a very yeah. cute tie in, right. I think. So yeah. it's Tea Lake Tea and Treats. Right. And Chef Trisha, she had been in the healthcare industry for a number of years. Right. She she always loved to bake, but when she retired, she enrolled in culinary school so she could learn how to run a food service business. Yes. And so this is her first year doing it. Uh-huh. And she's uh, at the farmer's market mm-hmm. in Lewiston. That's where we met up with her last week. And she's getting a lot of farmer market share. Yes. Because her business is really taking off. Yeah, and so she's that's got, great. She, uh, yes. And uh, what I, I, I thought was really something that uh, went right to my heart she described herself as someone who loves tea with a dream. Uh-huh. Wow. And I think a lot of us who are passionate about tea can, can embrace that. Yeah. Okay. And so she is right now uh, has a, 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 a small offering, but she's going to increase it. Uh-huh. And we're going to be watching this. I think it's going to be very exciting. Yeah. And I will tell you personally, mm-hmm. we purchased the lemon raspberry cake. Mm-hmm. And it was fabulous. It was, you know, and I think uh, 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 something like that can, you know, can be overdone. And uh, this was such a, it's a very, I mean, here I am going about cake here, but uh, <laughs> it, was, it was such a nicely balanced, you know, kind of that sweetness and tartness. Yes, and, and yes. Like, oh, well, this is not bad. Right, <laughs> you know? right. No, it yeah. was, it was excellent. Yeah. And I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Yeah. And I, I'd like to end by saying mm-hmm. my new quote. Okay. Let me eat cake. Yeah, not too much. <laughs> not too much. Yeah. Okay. All right. So do I hear that sound? I think it's coming up. Ah. <laughs> Très bien, monsieur. All right. So I hear the sound of our that familiar tea kettle telling us it's time to wrap up. Uh-huh. To say au revoir. All right. And... I want to thank all our, our listeners and watchers mm-hmm. and to On TV Studios mm-hmm. for letting us be here, to my charming Trey Genius Arm Candy studio engineer and co-host, Chris. That's too much. <laughs> I want to thank everyone yep. again. Right. And keep sending those yep. Questions and comments. Comments, they're piling up. I think that might be something we're going to venture. Yep. Oh, and your your mug. Yes. Your mug, if you want to oh. show show that. Oh, oh, uh, let's, I've I've not done this before. All right, uh, here's your. Uh, uh, we're I guess that's a lead in to something we're going to be doing. We're going to be absent for a little bit. And we, it's kind of foreshadowing some some topics for the future. Yes. Okay. So excited about that. So. Again, signing off, au revoir, and as we like to say at Barb's Tea Service, please stay tuned. Very good. Okay. 